And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Salvation Basics on this, sun on this Sunday, 13th March, 2022. Uh, this morning, my message is entitled, You Have a Lot of Time. Not, um, you don't have a lot of time. Our key text is taken from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 10. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 to 10. And, uh, and the Word of God reads, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking in their own lusts, and saying, Where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they, as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and, as, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall uh, heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Let's, uh, let's uh, uh, bow in the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for this time, for the reading of your word, and even for this time, uh, for the preaching of your word. And Lord, we thank you for the faithfulness of those who are here, uh, tuning to listen to your word. Father, empower me even now to preach your word. And that, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will open the hearts and minds of, uh, uh, of, of those here to understand your word, to receive your word, and to know that time is indeed very, very short. So, Lord, uh, uh, we thank you for what you're about to do as we commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, by way of intro introduction, last week, I, I preach a message about how you view God. Uh, is it as how God presents himself or as you think? Um, the fact of the matter is um, you don't change God. However you think of God, however I think of God, whatever we think of God is not going to change God one bit. What God wants us to know about him is in the Word of God. It's in the Bible, right? And um, and 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 you cannot pick and choose passages out of the uh, 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 the Bible and say, well, you know, I like this about God, but I don't like that about God. Um, no, you know, you can stick your head in the sand and um, and think that, well, you know, because I don't see it, it won't exist. No, it doesn't go away. All right, you can't change God, and you won't change God in any way that you hope, right? And the things that this week, right, this week, and the things that contrary to the belief of many, right, time is actually very short. It is much shorter than, 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 than you think, than I think, than the world thinks. The world thinks, hey, look, you know, uh, uh, let's go on as usual. Let's make our money. Let's get married. Let's start a family. Uh, uh, let's raise our children. Let's buy houses. Let's buy cars. Blah 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 blah. So on and so forth. Well, the thing, is, the thing of the, a thing of the, a thing of it is, time is short. While there's nothing wrong with getting on with our lives, right? We need to be prepared for what is to come. And um, and Second Peter chapter three verse eight. Um, the thing said, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that a thousand years is 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 with the Lord. No, so, so, sorry. That, a, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. God is outside of time. He created time. Man's understanding and concept of time means nothing to God, right? Um, uh, uh, for us, time marches on. You know, with each passing second, I'm closer to the grave. I'm not being morbid here, but you know, that's the fact, right? And, um, and, but with God, time. He's outside of time, which is why the Bible says, 
that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day, right? He's outside of time. He doesn't exist within time. Um, you know, he views one day. He can view one day as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So it can be as long as that or as short as that, right? Um, so what does this mean for people on earth? Well, here's what it means, all right? Time is short. Jesus Christ is coming back. So let me just get into my, my first point, the last days. Um, <clears throat> Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3, it says the last days. But before I get into that, the things that the last days, uh, uh, we are in the last days. The last days are the days uh, that are before the return of Christ, the second, uh, well, the return of Christ. And we are in the last days, right? Um, Christ's coming will be preceded by two events. Uh, one is the rapture, per 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. We won't read that. And the, and the, sec, and, and, and the, and the, and the seven years of the Great Tribulation as, um, as prophesied in the book of Revelation. I'm not going to read that either. All right? The thing is that 2 Peter chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 3 speaks about, uh, they, it mentioned scoffers. All right? Let me, just, let me just read that. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Um, sorry. Um, verse 3. Knowing this first, know this first, that in the last days, scoffers, uh, uh, there shall come in the last days, scoffers, walking after their own lusts. What are scoffers? Scoffers are those that mock. They are mockers. They are unbelievers. They think that Christians are stupid, idiots, foolish, whatever. And, uh, and, that, you know, and that we believe fairy tales. And not only do we believe fairy tales, we live in a fairy tale world, whatever. All right? They are scoffers. They are mockers. Um, uh, they are not unlike the intellectuals who questioned Paul after he had presented the gospel of life to them on Mars Hill, Acts chapter 17, verse 32. And when they had heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, you must be mad. Are you crazy? The dead don't rise up and walk again. You know, how can the, life, how can the dead come back to life again? We all know once we die, we start rotting away. We don't come back to life, right? And some others, perhaps a bit more polite, said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Uh, another time, please. Thank you very much. You know, I've had that happen to me um, when, I, when I say, hey, can I present to you uh, uh, the gospel or talk to you about, uh, would you like to go to heaven? Oh, no, 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 no. Another time, please. Thank you very much. Well, hey, mockers, right? They mock us. They reject the preaching of the cross because to them it is foolishness. It is folly. It is stupidity. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. I preached this, I think, believe, I believe it was last week or week before. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are, the, which are saved, it is the power of God. Look at what God has to say. For the preaching of the cross, the preaching of the cross is to them that die. It is foolishness to them that die. Die what? Die a physical death? No. They die a spiritual death because they think it is foolish, it is stupid, it is nonsense, it is idiotic. So, hey, they pass from this life to the next life without the blood of Jesus Christ. And they will stand before Jesus Christ on his left hand. Oh, this is my left hand, right? And, and, and Jesus Christ will, 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 will judge them as goats from his great white throne. And he will throw them or they will get thrown into the lake of fire. Um, but the second part of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, but unto us which are saved, what is the power of God? The, the preaching of the cross is the power of God. Because why? Because it tells us, first, the Bible tells us that we are sinners. In the, the scriptures have concluded all under sin in the book of Romans, right? Uh, Galatians chapter 3 says uh, the law is our schoolmaster that takes us, that brings us to a savior. And the, and the preaching of the cross tells us that there is a Savior. Jesus Christ is that Savior who can save us, who will save us, right? And, um, and for those who believe him, have or has already saved us. The thing is, how will he save us? He will save those who are willing to confess, to admit that they are sinners, for them who are willing to repent, to turn away from their righteousness, to turn away from their works of righteousness, to turn away from sin and say, sin put me in this position and sin is what is driving me into the lake of fire. I don't want that anymore. Sin was what put Jesus Christ on the cross. I don't want that anymore. I don't want to do that. I want to turn from that. And not only turn from that, 
I turn to Jesus Christ and look upon him in faith to save me. Jesus Christ, please save me. I am a sinner. I can't do anything to save myself. All right, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Power of God to save all who turn to him in repentance and turn to Christ in faith. Scoffers live their own life, live their lives according to their own desires, cravings, longings, lusts, concupiscence. You know, Roman, uh, 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 sorry, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, what? In the last days, scoffers will come walking in their own lusts. Right? It's like, whatever my heart tells me to do, I will do that. I want to do that. That's what I want to do. As such, scoffers are described as self-lovers, caring only for themselves. 2 Tim, uh, Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. This know also that, again, in the last days, perilous times will, shall come. Right? These times are perilous times. Perilous times for what? Perilous times for people. All right? For people. And in verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. Speaking about false accusers, I was a, I was a victim of false, accu of, of false accusers and coming from a quarter that many do not expect them to come, expect such accusations to come from. But anyway, that's another story for another time. Right? Incontinent, fierce, despises of those that are good. The thing is that, you goody two shoes, I hate you. Um, but the thing is, look, if I were to come to you and say to you, you are a sinner, you are, des you are bound for the lake of fire, but there is an escape route for you, is that an act of love? Or is that an, or, or what? You know, hey, listen, friend, you're going to step into this hole that's it's going to end in fire you know let me let me show you the way to avoid that to to step back from that abyss no you are nuts hey despisers of those that are good uh, verse 4 traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of god having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away hey Tim, paul told Tim, uh, timothy that these people will exist in church they have this outward form of godliness, but in reality, they deny the power of they deny the power of the, you know, of God in them because they have got no God in them. And Paul warned from such turn away. Um, scoffers identify themselves as Christians, but without, sadly, the knowledge that they are equally condemned with the loss. Look at verse five. All right, having a form of God, of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Right. They can look pious and, 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 and faithful on the outside and all that side, but inside it's nothing. Right? Jesus called them whited sepulchres. Right? They seem to have an outward appearance of religion, of piety, of whatever. But yet inside them, they're full of corruption, full of putrefaction, spiritual putrefaction, full of spiritual corruption and uh, whatever. Um, uh, uh, so scoffers. Um, scoffers are described as, as self-lovers, caring only for themselves. You know, like the Greeks, scoffers have this innate need to show that they, need, they, know, they, they know a thing or two, right, about either themselves or God or something like that, other than what God really uh, has told them, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, other, other than the reality that God has told them. Uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 21, again, Mars Hill. You know, Paul is there con uh, 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 contending preaching the word, and um, verse 21 of Acts chapter 17 says, For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Hey, hey, hey this is what I think. This is what I know. What do you say? She, she said that. He said that. Oh, really? Mm, ah. The thing is, here, here it is, all right? The Bible has told us everything we need to know about ourselves, about our state, our spiritual state with God, and what God has done with uh, has done for us, right? And Romans chapter one verse twenty two, um, the Word of God says, professing themselves to be wise, they become they became fools. As far as God's concerned, man's 
wisdom is foolishness to him. You are stupid. You are a fool. It's folly. I have done this for you. I'm telling you this about yourself. I'm telling you about myself, my holiness, my righteousness. You know, and you're all saying, no, 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 God's not like that. God, God cannot be all black and white. God must be, there must be some sort of gray area with God. God, God is love. God surely cannot throw people into hell, right? No, that's wrong. God will throw people into hell. But God is indeed love. How? For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. Right? Um, loosely, John chapter 3, verse 16. Um, and these people, these scoffers, these mockers, would like to fill themselves with any knowledge. Right? Second Peter chapter, uh, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. You give them sound doctrine? No, they don't want to hear it. They want to hear something else. Why? They want to hear something else that soothes their conscience, uh, that soothes their, 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 their guiltiness, that scratches their itching ears. But after their own lusts shall they heap unto themselves teachers. It's, it's, look, the Bible says after their own lusts, they will heap unto themselves teachers, having itching ears. I want to hear something. I want to hear something that, that will comfort me, that will tell me that good things. All right? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to do that, you know, if you want to hear some sugar-coated message, I'm not going to give it to you, right? Because I'm not going to have your blood on my hands. Um, verse 4, For they shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Um, but the thing is that, um, you know, they want to know something, but it's not with the knowledge that really counts that they are sinners, that they are lost, they are unrighteous with God, and that they will be judged, and they will be thrown into the lake of fire. They want to hear something that is positive. Oh, let's be positive. Let's not be so negative. Churches say that right now. Oh, Brother Roy, so negative. Well, the thing is that I am. Yes, because the Bible is negative. You can, if you cannot hand, you know, you know, if you're not going to hear the negative, you're not going to accept the negative, how can you accept the positive? Because the negative tells you where you stand with God if you're a sinner. The positive tells you that, hey, look, you can have an escape route. Right? Um, so 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, ever learning but never, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They want to learn all sorts of things about, about God, all right, after their own lusts. Do they want to hear the truth? No, they, no, they don't. Want, they don't want to endure sound doctrine. Again, you know, I've been, a, you know, I, I've been on the receiving end of that, and it's very, very edifying in the sense that you know, my eyes were open and said, "Hmm, yeah, right." You know, I'll see you on the other side. Um, and Second Timothy, uh, Timothy chapter uh, four, verse four, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Um, so the thing is that they are scoffers. Uh, who, 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 you know, you know, who scoff and mock and things, and these are God mockers, right? And they mock God, God mockers. And in their ignorant, foolish, prideful wisdom, they mock God. Where is God and his judgment, they said, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, and saying, where's the promise of his coming? You know, hey, you all preach about the, com the coming of, of Christ. Christ is returning soon. Where is he? Where, 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 where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, you know, our forefathers died, they fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. They, they, hey, you know, it's business as usual from the beginning of creation. However, I'll, I'll get to that later. All right? They think that God's judgment at the, about the flood you know, they think that God's judgment that was a flood was either some fairy tale, or they reject it, or they've plain forgotten about it. Look at verses 5 and 6 of 2 Peter chapter 3. For this they, will, they are willingly, willingly ignorant of, right, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water in the water, right, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. All right? They say that, hey, look, you know, from the creation, one well, of the things is that, ladies and gentlemen, from the creation, there was a period of time, all right, before the flood occurred. So, 
These people said, hey, from the beginning, my, our fathers fell asleep and you know, all things continue as they were. Wrong. There was the flood. God judged. Out of the entire world, only eight souls were saved. Right? Um, um, so, you know, they were willingly, they, they say, where, where, hey, where's, God's, where, you know, where's God's promise of his coming? All things, are, all things have, it's just business as usual. Right? The thing is that they have no idea what God will do one day. Look at verse, look at verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which, now are, which are now, by the, word, by the same word, are kept in store. Right? Hey, God has reserved this world right, unto fire against the day of judgment. The day of judgment is coming, ladies and, gen uh, ladies and gents. It is not, nothing is going to stop that. All right? Nothing is going to stop that. And time is short, and it draws nearer by each day. All right? And uh, uh, let me just finish reading that. Reserve unto fire against a, a day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. All right? Hey, ungodly people are going to perish. All right? This world is now reserved for that judgment one day. And... Um, and these scoffers, they are also rejectors of God. They reject God for gods of their own making, right? They mock God. They say, hey, God doesn't exist. God cannot be like that. Where is God? You know, where is the promise of God? Um, they reject God. They reject God by having what? Gods of their own making, right? They don't want to. They don't want to have an intimate knowledge of the, they don't want to have a true knowledge, right, of the God of, the, of God of heaven. But they make their own gods. Romans chapter 1, verses 21 through 25. Romans 1, 21 through 25. Because that when they knew God, they, they glorified him not as God. They understood something. They knew God. But they, instead of glorifying him as God, they were not thankful. They glorified him not as God. And neither were they thankful. Neither were thankful. But became vain in their imaginations. Vain is what? Futile. Vain is not like, oh, I'm such a pretty man. No. The word vain is, it, it means futile, all right? They became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, right? Their foolish heart, first, their, their, their hearts are foolish, and then it got darkened. It, it's like someone pulled wool over their eyes, seriously, all right? And verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, all right? Charles Darwin said, hey, look, you know, a survival of the fittest, whatever, you know, we came from nothing, Millions and millions of years of evo you know, evolution. Right. Um, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Rather than understanding what God is, who God is, they create their own fairy tales. Right? And change the glory of the, uh, glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beast, be uh, beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their, uh, their own bodies between themselves, who change the truth of God, of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. All right? So what did they do? They say, hey, look, this is what I want. I don't want you, God. I want gods of my own imagination. What did God do? Verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up uncleanness. You want that? Fine. Go ahead. You do as you wish. It's not going to change me one bit. One day you're going to pay the price for that. All right? Worse, they, are, they, 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 even, they, they even ignorantly worship unknown gods. The Greeks were very superstitious. Look at, look at Acts chapter, go back to Acts chapter 17, verses 22, uh, 22 and 23. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. All right? Verse 23, for as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him I declare unto you. Paul found an opportunity to preach this God that they don't know, that they didn't know, unto them. But these, these guys were superstitious. Well, you know, hey, hey, we've got Apollos, we've got Mars, we've got all this. But just in case we missed out one God, so we just dedicate one altar to an unknown God, saying, to the unknown God, right? Just in case, let's cover all bases. Paul grabbed the opportunity and said, 
here is the God of the Bible that would, whom I will preach unto you. All right, the thing is that, um, again, the last days, scoffers will come. They are scoffers. They are God, they are God mockers, and they reject God. And, um, uh, but the thing is that, look, listen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, gents, Christ, Christ's return is nigh. It is near. You just have to look at world events. The thing is that world events point to the fact that the return of God, of Christ, is near. Right? Jesus Christ warned his, his disciples to take heed of the times. Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Hey, listen, be careful. Don't let anyone trick you or deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Right? Listen, this is not a recent phenomenon. It has been going on for centuries. All right? Uh, um, you know, over the centuries, there have been many false Christs uh, who, that have led many astray into false cults. And for you, some of you who are old enough, um, you may remember Jim Jones. All right? He has his own community in, uh, I believe it's French Guyana. Uh, uh, I can't remember which part of Guyana. And he had his followers. He, I, um, and the thing is that he committed suicide after killing off all his followers. All right? They drank poison-laced Kool-Aid, which is why when, you know, you know, when, 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 when people say, whose who's Kool-Aid are you drinking? They were referring to that event. These people were tricked. These people were bamboozled. They followed some false prophet, and they died. Right? I think about a thousand that died. Right? Look at verses 6 and 7 of Matthew chapter 24. Right? Jesus told his, his, his disciples, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Right? See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. All these things must happen. There are, there are actual wars, and then you hear rumors of wars. You know, perhaps someone's gonna, uh, some country is going to invade some other, uh, some other country or, or whatever. You know, these things have to come to pass, but the end is not yet. All right? That's not, but that the end is not yet, but these are the events that will lead up to that. In verse 7, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Listen, there are conflicts on many levels around the world. All right, in Myanmar, we've got, uh, you, know, you know, we've got that government crackdown. Uh, in U Ukraine, Russia walked into Ukraine. Um, who knows what else? All right. Um, somewhere in Asia, uh, there's a small country. Um, uh, 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 there's a, uh, I'll leave it to your imagination. There's a small country with, uh, you know, with a with a young man at the helm, and he occasionally tosses missiles, uh, tosses missiles across the, uh, you know, uh, well, tosses missiles around. Right. Um, the thing is that you know there are. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. Diverse mean various places, many places, different places. How many of you remember the 2004 tsunami that took the lives of more than 200,000 people? Right? It happened just like that. Hey, and the thing is that when Jesus Christ returns, he's not going to announce it. He's not going to take out a full page ad in the papers to say, I'm coming tomorrow, at this particular hour, hang around and welcome me. It's not going to happen, all right? Jesus Christ is going to come unannounced. His return will not be publicized. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 36, uh, 24, rather, 36 through 39. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, and no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father, only, only God the Father knows when that's going to happen. Right? But as the days of Noah were, were, Noah is Noah, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the sun be. Right? The coming of the sun, the coming of Christ will be, will be, um, you know, will be similar to the days that of, of Noah. Right? For, in the days, uh, for in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage under the day that Noah entered, uh, entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall, so, so shall also the coming of the son, son of Man be. Hey, look, you know, people were carousing, partying, having, generally having a good time. Isn't that what we're all doing right now? 
all right no 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 brother Roy you know I work I work very hard yeah sure but don't you have dinners don't you have you know don't you go out with friends occasionally uh, uh you party you know marrying marrying and giving in and giving in marriage well we get oh I'm gonna you know I'm seeing a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever I'm gonna get married to them blah 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 aren't these times similar to that it's gonna happen just like that when Christ returns so the return of Christ is nigh the world events kind of you know, point to that fact and Christ is gonna come back unannounced right um first Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 verse 2 for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night no thief is going to tell anybody when they will strike they're not going to say hey guess what you know I'm a thief I'm gonna come to your house on this day uh at this hour um hey be prepared for me to come all right you know no thief is gonna but the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. No thief, as I said, ever tell anybody when they will strike. My question to you is, are you folks ready? Right? Are you, are you folks ready for when Christ returns? What's going to happen when Christ returns? First, uh, first Thessalonians chapter 4, verses uh, uh, 16 and 17 says, that what, you know, that there will be a trump, not Donald Trump, but you know, a Trump, a loud trumpet sound, right? Um, I, I don't have that in my notes. Um, I don't have this passage in my notes uh, just yet, but you know, you can refer to that yourself. Um, the thing is, be not ignorant, right? Be not ignorant. You don't have a lot of time left. When the Trump does sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. First, as in chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. The dead shall in, in, in Christ shall rise first. And then those who, are, and those who are left will join them up in the air to be with Christ forevermore. Right? One day, Christians are going to be taken out of the way. Right? And then the seven years of tribulations, the a tribulation will begin. Seven terrible, terrible years. And all these are prophesied in the book of Revelation. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I encourage you to open the book of Revelation and have a read, right? Um, um, but anyway, please, again, don't think that you have a lot of time left. Don't be ignorant of God and his faithfulness, right? He said it, he will perform it, right? He's a God who, who means what he says and says what he means, right? Just because things, like, things go on as usual doesn't mean that it's going to continue that way. Again, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Time means nothing to God. He exists outside of it, being creator of time, because you cannot comprehend what that means, doesn't mean that it is not real. Right? You may think that, oh, Brother Roy is, you know, he's talking out his backside. No, nothing can exist outside of time. Yes, the creator of time can exist outside of time, right? You know, the things that, like ostrich with its head in the sand doesn't, just because an ostrich has stuck its head in the sand doesn't mean that the predator is no longer there. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there, right? So, don't be ignorant. The thing is, be prepared. God warned in 2 Peter chapter 3 that the time of judgment is nigh, but his heart is that the world be saved. Verses three and nine, Second Peter chapter three, verses uh, 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 sorry, Second Peter chapter three, verses nine and ten. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. Hey, God is not slack. He's not like you know, la di da about His promise, as some men count slackness. You know, man can be rather la di da about His promises. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I made a promise. Uh, you don't have to keep reminding me every six months. All right. The thing is that God is not slack. A day is like a thousand years, a day and a thousand years as a day to Him. Time is just like that, all right? But it's long-suffering to us, but he's very patient. He's very patient to, to us, but not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. One day, ladies and gentlemen, all right, it's not man it's not global warming that's going to destroy the world. It is God who's going to do that. Because God has promised that. Right? 
whatever we do to this earth is not going to change. It's not going to destroy it. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't take care of it. But let's not go overboard with it. All right? You can, you know, different governments, the world governments are, are saying, well, you know, let's tackle this global warming thing. Good luck to you. All right? So the thing is that God is patient to us, uh, patient with us, and, are, and he's not willing that any should perish. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but he, his heart is that he wants all the world to be saved, all right? Um, uh, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. When the thing is that, when, what, what this passage is that all should come to repentance is that God wants people to make that, 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 that willing decision to repent, all right? It is not God who is not God who will make people repent. Because if it's God who will make people to repent, then this passage doesn't make any sense. It is a voluntary action by man, right? And you know when Christ returns, boom! Everything is gonna you know you know you know you know heaven shall pass away with great noise. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. Elements will melt. The earth and also in the works therein shall be burned up. Jesus Christ is the only everlasting life. John chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. Jesus said unto her, I am, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, shall, yet shall he live. What this means is that, hey, look, you know, if he has believed in, if, if whomever has believed in me already, even though the person may be physically dead, Yet shall he live. He will one day live again. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Why do I say, why do I keep saying 16 and 17? Anyway, you know, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right? They will one day arise again. Verse 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall not, shall never die. Believest thou this? Jesus is the only acceptable righteousness to God for the atonement of sin because he is the Lamb of God. All right, John chapter 1, verse 29. The same, the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which what? Taketh away the sins of the sin of the world. He is our propitiation for sin. He is the atonement of our sin. First John chapter 2, verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins, but not just for ours only. It's not just for you or for me and for, you know, whomever else. It's for the entire world, but also the sins of the whole world. Uh, uh, 1 John 4.10 Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent us, sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Jesus Christ is the atonement for our sins. Right? He, made, he was made sin for us. Jesus Christ was made sin for us. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 and he hath made his, For he hath made him to be sin for us. Jesus Christ took on the penalty for sin for us. He suffered the penalty of sin for us. He was made sin for us. Who knew no sin? Jesus Christ knew no sin. Jesus Christ was without sin. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Right? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Because of Jesus, uh, because of Jesus Christ, we might be made the righteousness of God in him, by him, through him. Right? He was God's provision. God provided for us, free of charge, utterly, right? Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. Abraham said, and Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering, so that they, both, uh, so they went both of them together. What is this? God had put Abraham to the test. Abra Isaac was the, was the fir you know, first, uh, was, 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 was Abraham's son by Sarah, and he, a son of his old age, of their old age, was given to him by promise, uh, given to Sarah and Abraham by promise of God. And then God said to him, I want you to sacrifice Isaac to me. In faith, Abraham did it. Well, I mean, Abraham obeyed God. He prepared the stuff and brought a, uh, Isaac with him up, up the hill, up the mount. And Isaac was saying, Father, where is this? Where's a, where's a burnt offering? And Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. That is faith, ladies and gentlemen. Because Abraham counted God 
able to provide him with another son if he were to really sacrifice Isaac. Right? The thing is that our righteousness, God will not accept Isaiah 64 verse 6 because our righteousnesses are filthy rags. It doesn't matter how good you are, how lovely a person you are, how sweet a person you are, unless you are saved and have, and, and, and have the righteousness of Christ, your righteousness and my righteousness to God is absolutely and utterly unacceptable because it's filthy, right? And because of, you know, by our righteousness shall no one be justified. Romans chapter 3, verse 20, for by the deeds of the law, deeds of the law means that, you know, hey, I will try not to sin, I will try not to lie, I will try not to commit adultery, I'll do this, I'll do that. No, those are deeds of the law. For by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, in God's sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law tells us that we are sinners. Say, I'm a liar, I'm a adulterer, I'm a blasphemer, I'm covetous, all that sort of thing. All right? For by the, for the, the law is the knowledge of sin. So I can't do anything to undo that because I'm already a sinner. Because salvation is by grace of God and not the works of man. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Why? Because anything else will not be grace, but debt. Romans chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace. If I were to work, all right, if God were to accept my works, then it is debt because he will owe me. It's like people going to work. You work for a company, you work for somebody, you get paid. That is debt. You know, hey, you know, uh, you don't work for free. It is not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Verse 5, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. I believe God. Abraham believed God and was counted to him for righteousness. That's it. It's very simple. It's F-O-C, free of charge. Repent of sin. Turn to Christ in salvation, or, or rather in faith for salvation. Acts chapter 20, verse 21. You know, there's no difference to the Greek, uh, Jew and the Greek. Right? Paul preached repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? So the thing is, that here are some thoughts. Time is short. Jesus Christ is coming. In the last days, there will be scoffers. I'm sure some of you are scoffers. You're mockers. You reject God. And you're here to hear, you're here to hear me say something, and then, and then you probably think that oh, Roy is nuts. That's fine. But here's the warning to you. One day you will stand in judgment, and that you, know, you will have to give an account for your thoughts, for your words, whatever, for your actions, whatever. So the thing is that our time is short. Jesus Christ will return soon. Don't keep rejecting him, uh, rejecting him until he says, fine. If that's what you want, I'll give it to you, right? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. For this, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. If you want to do this, I will send you strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You want to believe a lie? Go ahead. I will send you delusions that for you to believe. I'll help you along the way. That they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Noah's world did that and they all died, except for eight souls. The thing is that um, you don't know how much time you have. Don't reject him, right? Um, you, don't, you don't know how much time you have. And, um, and, and, you know, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, for as, it, for as it is appointed a man wants to die, and after that is a judgment. You know, I was just reading some news article yesterday. You know, a man was about to get off a bus. When the driver had to, had to slam on the brakes, the man was thrown forward. He was an older man, and he suffered some injuries, and he died several days later. The man was just about to get off a bus. He was healthy otherwise. But he didn't know that his time was almost up. And he died. Are you certain that nothing is going to happen to you? Right? Is your soul... You know, is your eternal soul of such unimportance to you that you can kind of like toy around with it and fool around with it? God took it very seriously, took your soul very seriously that he gave us his only begotten son while we were yet his enemies. 
right? Don't be like King Agrippa in Acts chapter 26, verses 27 and 28. Right? Paul preached the word King Agrippa. In verse, 28, verse 27, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. The thing is that it's one thing to believe what the prophets have to say, and then to act, it's another thing to act on that belief. And then King Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Probably the saddest word in the Bible, ladies. Thou almost persuadest me to be a Christian. I may be persuading you, but I cannot force you to be a Christian. But I can only encourage you to be not like King Agrippa. Because one day you will face Christ as your judge. Whether you face him on his right hand or you face him on his left hand, you, we all of us will be judged right, by our works. Those on his left hand will go into the lake of fire. Those on the right hand will receive rewards of what they have done. And then they will enter in the kingdom of God. All right, ladies and gentlemen, time is short. God does not want you to perish. Events show that, you know, hey, point to the fact that Christ is going to return soon. Are you ready for that? Or are you going to get caught when the world gets judged? Or are you going to die even before that? And then you're going to spend time waiting for that final judgment. If you're not saved today, ladies and gentlemen, think about this. Are you a sinner? Have you ever lied? Right? I'd like to pick on this thing because nobody can tell me they've never lied before, ever. Even thinking about it, all right, is already to God permitting it. You think about lying, you've done it already as far as God's concerned. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for this time, um, uh, uh, for this preaching, on the, uh, uh, for the preaching of this message. Uh, Father, we just pray that the word, the word will not come back void, but that, uh, that uh, but the folks here who are not saved will think upon your word and uh, think upon uh, uh, the law and think upon, uh, think upon uh, uh, things that they've done uh, that, are, that is sin to you and that they may want to turn away from their sin, to repent of their sin, repent of their good works, repent of their own self-righteousness, and to abandon all that, and to turn in faith to Jesus Christ, turn to Jesus Christ in faith to save them. Lord, I just ask today, maybe even be the day of salvation, that, um, that there may be rejoicing in heaven, and that, um, and that another name may be written in the book of life, in the Lamb's book of life. So Lord, thank you once again for this time, I would just ask you that you give us a good week ahead, and, um, and Lord, just give us safety. Lord, thank you. Uh, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.